Tēnā koe, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koutou e ngā rangatira uh, i rotu i tēnei whare. Uh, e tua hari ana hau ki te tū, uh, ki te kōrero uh, o tēnei pire. Uh, mihi a tiki a koe e te, te menita, e te rangatira, nā o mahi um, mō, te, mō te afi uh, tō tātou te iwi Māori. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, um, I too am joining uh, our colleagues on this side uh, in the Labour Party, sir, to uh, offer our support for this bill at its first reading. But in saying that, sir, we do uh, have uh, many concerns and reservations uh, around certain aspects of the bill. And, First and foremost, sir, I do want to commend the Minister for his uh, mahi in, in, in supporting and promoting this bill and the intent behind the bill. Uh, the uh, installing or affirming Māori as uh, the kaitiaki of uh, te reo Māori, you know, that's, a, that's a great achievement. And uh, I believe the intent is, is, is well made. I believe that the execution, though, fails. Uh, the execution within this bill, uh, it, it fails to meet uh, that that, goal, that lofty aspiration. Uh, sir, uh, I I am one of those Maori, and there's quite a few of us who didn't grow up with the reo in our in our home. Uh, I was around it a lot, particularly in uh, church. <laughs> and, uh, and other ceremonial occasions, but I was just of that generation that missed out uh, before the kohanga reo took off. Uh, and um, so, you know, various attempts have been made, and I can just, I'm one of those ones that can sort of get by and get a basic conversation going and hold my own in certain settings. But, um, you know, uh, I really uh, want to take it upon myself to improve uh, my... Uh, my quality and, and of real, uh, and I definitely will be working on that, sir. But, sir, so I know I, one of the greatest, um, uh, I, I get a real joy uh, when, I, when I'm at my children's uh, sports games, uh, netball games, basketball, and I see the Kura Kopapa teams that are playing and, um, and the parents that are supporting them. And when you see all these little um, tamariki all speaking the reo and um, cheering themselves on. It's, 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 really, it's really heartwarming and uh, I, I like to go over and, and go get beside them and, and have a little bit of a corded all myself. And I think uh, that's what we want to see and I, I do acknowledge my, my colleague Calvin Davis with his, his dreams and aspirations and we all share those dreams and aspirations that te reo can be a transactional language that we can be just naturally used or interchanged uh, in, everyday, in everyday life in Aotearoa. And so we do, want to, um, we do want that to achieve those lofty goals and this, this bill is a step in that direction. And uh, we, what I would like to see, though, sir, is, is some improvements that can be made. Uh, because, uh, like any conversation, and there are two parties. If you, uh, and that, that's the best way, I believe, to, to, to really up your reo, is to converse with somebody in te reo. And likewise, with this bill, there are two parties. There are Māori and the Crown. And that's the basis of the foundation of our country with Te Tiriti o Waitangi. So there are two parties to the transactions, two parties to a conversation. Now, my concerns regarding this bill, sir, is that the Crown is abrogating its responsibilities to protect and uphold the reo. Um, and those, that duty, which is a legal and a, a treaty responsibility, have been, we're, we're hard fought hard fought by those great rangatira, um, huirangi waikira pūru and the like, those great kaumātuas that, uh, that fought those cases to get the reo recognised. And so, sir, what we have through this bill is the Crown is no longer, is basically um, backtrack, well, to, to, um, reducing its commitment to the reo 
uh, under the guise of, but we are installing Māori as a kaitiaki. And I give it as, a, as an example, sir, just, just you know, the, the, the Crown is fundamentally, it's great to say that the, the reo is a taonga. Yes, it is. But the, um, the Crown needs to put in black and white its commitment, its responsibilities to te reo. And that should be spelt out within this bill. Now, the bill, sir, talks about the Crown, that this Act binds the Crown. But then, which is, which is a law, but it, what does it bind the Crown to? It doesn't bind the Crown to much. Because if we just look at the, some of the opening provisions in the bill, where it talks about uh, the principles, uh, those principles are, uh, which will apply to the government, government departments, those principles are meaningless in effect, because it's just as far as practical, uh, when it suits or how, you know, um, w when they're able to do it. There's, there's no firm, hard and fast responsibilities that the Crown is owning up to in its role as the treaty partner as, and to protect and, and promote te reo Māori. So that, that is uh, a major concern that I have around this bill, and I, I, I definitely believe that the Crown's responsibilities need to be clearly articulated as to what it will do. It's all very well and good to create a, 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 a new governance body for Māori, and, um, but if it's not backed up, if all the Crown is, is becoming is a, is a contracting partner, partner through TPK to, to, to Matawai bodies or, and their entities that will sit underneath them, then that really is a huge reduction in what the Crown uh, Crown's responsibilities are. Because let us remember, sir, that the renaissance in te reo Māori and the recognition through the 1987 Act, they're only really recent uh, um, enactments. You know, I'm talking about the past 30 years. But we're talking about a Crown Māori relationship that goes back over 170 years. And so for a long period of that time, the Crowns showed no commitment. In fact, there was, there was they wanted to they weren't really too fussed about what happened to the real for over a hundred years. And so I believe the Crown needs to um, have, have, be more specific in terms of what its responsibilities will be to te reo. Now briefly, sir, I just want to go on to some other issues that I have. Although there's this 12-member body of Te Matawai, seven of which will be drawn from all the iwi around the country, and that seems to be the model these days. They have it in fisheries and in other settings that we have these big electoral colleges. I do um, query how effective those bodies are in terms of coming... Well, they're there to appoint a person, but there is really no, nothing spelt out in the bill in terms of the quality or the mixture or the gender balance or the, or the skills and experience that will be... Um, the outcome of all of these separate elections that will form this Te Matawai body. And so uh, it's all very well and good to put representatives of 11, 14, 15 iwi into one room and get them to side on one person. But really, how will that translate into a really effective, strong and highly skilled governance body, which is really uh, what, what we need? Because we've seen examples of poor governance uh, I only need to refer to Te Kohanga Reo and it's, uh, what was that, TPO, Te Pātanga Ohonga, it's a subsidiary and the issues around there. And also the fact too that, the, that, that if you, we remember that the Minister of Education tried to sort of say, oh, there's no responsibility because it's, it's a contracted party, it's, uh, that, that we can't really look behind there. And those are the sorts of issues that you'll get when you create these bodies which have no clear accountabilities. Uh, but are ultimately funded through the public purse. And so I think we need greater uh, thought needs to be given in terms of making sure we get the best, highly qualified, experienced um, um, individuals which will come up through these election processes and will ultimately be the governance body uh, on Te Mātāwai. Because, sir, there are many uh, regional examples of grassroots iwi initiatives that have um, produced outstanding results. And I only need to look up to my relations up Taranaki and Te Reo Taranaki and what they've done up there to, to really um, strengthen their reo and, and hold on to their mita. And, and uh, it's, 
uh, I think those sorts of examples need to be embodied into to Matawai, and they need to that those revitalisation. Um, um, I'm sorry to interrupt the honourable member. Oh, His time on. has expired. Oh, kia ora. I didn't hear the bell. Yeah. Kia ora I call Joe Hayes. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. I rauranga tira mā.